Good afternoon to everyone. Good afternoon to everyone. Uh, my name is Omar Macedo. Uh, I work nowadays as the head of technology development in Grid, grid Expertise LATAM. And today I'm going to tell you some words about the connected intelligent ads for the smart grids. So just before I start, I'm going to say a little, uh, some words about the Grid Expertise. Just for you to know, Grid Expertise is a new company. Recent, uh, it was launched last year. Uh, so it was a department from the NO Group and we passed in a spin-off processes and now we have a new company and this company delivers solution and deliver equipment for the DSO's companies in order to improve their operations uh, in the world. So uh, just uh, one, one point, the DSO acronymy, just for you to know, when I say DSO, I, I say it's a distribution system operator. In other words, it's the companies that deliver energy to the final clients. So in our houses, in our industries, in the commercial buildings, okay? So the, the vision, the mission of the grid expertise company is to deliver sustainable and reliable smart grids for the companies, the DSO companies. Uh, and the, this company, it was designed in order to attend the white, the white spaces in the distribution uh, sector energy. Uh, through its platform, we can deliver solutions of inter uh, and integrate lots of other systems in order to have the most, um, the most performance in the operation, uh, making all the complexity in the grids uh, the most performance as possible. Uh, our platform is segregated, let's say, in three main pieces. The one of them speaks of the devices, the softwares, and the services. Uh, we are going to address uh, both today and the future uh, uh, the, uh, operation for the, for the system and in a flexible and customizable way as possible. So we are going to deliver solutions as a services for uh, any distribution company in the world that needs our services. Uh, one of the main challenges we have nowadays when we speak of energy is the energy transition. And what does that mean? It means that in order for us to achieve the net zero, when we make even the emissions uh, by 2050, we need to have an electrification level uh, near the 50%, and we need to have at the same time the DRs, the, 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 the remote uh, resources, share more or less near 90%. So in order to have this uh, condition, uh, the DRS integration, they bring uh, complexity to the system operators. So it's not easy to have now lots of clients injecting energy in the circuits, along the circuits, and not flowing that normal path we know from generation to transmission, distributions, and so on. So operating a grid with this new scenario is very challenging for sure. Uh, and, for, and we believe that the power grids are the key factor for us to achieve uh, this energy transition. So we're speaking here about the responsibility of doing so. And which are the main challenges uh, for the DSOs? First of all is the flexibility, as was seen before. Uh, we have now lots of clients injecting energy in, uh, along the grid, and in the same time uh, we, we have uh, the, the climate's changing, so it's not easy to make the operation of the grid with all those elements. And we know the, the climate's changing, it's getting worse along the time, so it's not easy to have the, the optimized uh, performance of the grid, so it's a very, very big challenge. And also, in the end, we need to know that the DSOs are there to, to deliver quality solutions for their clients, for the final consumers. So they are the ones that need to be attended in the end of the day. So what are the power grids? The power grids are the revolution for this transition I was saying before. So we are going to deliver the technology uh, and this technology needs to be fast changing and it needs to be future proof. Uh, so what we're doing today needs to last for the upcoming years without the need to change the hardware that's there. And these new devices need to be uh, capable of uh, aggregating new solutions and new, new cases without the need of changing. 
Uh, and here, uh, I'm going to make the first touch point considering the 5G inside this energy, uh, energy world, let's say. Uh, I'm going to say a little bit about this grid futurability concept, just for you to know. Uh, Christian Amon and the, the previous guys that spoke before me, they, they gave lots of, of, of spoilers. But uh, when we say uh, about the network digital twin, we are saying that we can have all the grids digitalized, 3D model, and so on. And there we have also sensors, uh, power processing, edge computing. Uh, and this can lead us to this innovative re uh, resilience. And in order to do so, the operation, optimize, we need to have a, a, a very good backhaul support in this operation. So we, the connectivity uh, is the base for these new solutions. So here we believe that 5G is one of the enablers uh, of this future of the power grids, uh, because in the end we can have, with the 5G, uh, the capability of attending all the needs that we have, low latency, high throughput, uh, availability of the signals, and so on. And having these all together, we can reach a new level of business opportunities for the DSOs to, to make their operations. So uh, I'd like to present to you the Quantum Edge device. Uh, it's a, a new solution that Grid, grid Expertise develop, developed. Uh, it was a co-creation with our Qualcomm colleagues. Uh, and what's the revolution of this equipment? What Quantum Edge is going to deliver? It's an all-in-one solution. Uh, it can virtualize, uh, virtualize the, the functions that we have nowadays with physical equipment and integrate lots of functionalities. Uh, and it's possible in this way to have a better and most improved uh, quality of the services using this kind of uh, this, this solution. Uh, it's important to say that the Quantum Edge uh, has an um, automotive grade application, so it's tested, uh, it's ready to, to the market, uh, and it comes embedded with, with it uh, some sto uh, standard operation system, and we can have also cost customized uh, applications for each of the users of the solution. So I'm going to say this in, uh, a little bit in the future, uh, how we can have the third part, uh, co-creating co the solutions that we can have applied in the solution. Uh, okay, so when we say about the quad, we can have here uh, a better application of CAPEX, because in the end we can have here uh, the reduce of the equipment that are installed nowadays in the secondary substation. So we reduce the volume, the volume of the physical components that are there, and we substitute for the, for the quads. So for the future, we're going to have less equipment and the quads doing all the, the, all the work that needs to be done. And of course, in the end, we can also have a, a OPEX reduction because we can, we, the, the grid is more powerful, the, the processing in the edge is there, so we don't need to have the field crews working a lot to go through the circuits, go through the grid to see where a failure is, because the, the system is going to say here, the problem is here, go directly there, don't waste your time uh, where you don't need to be. Uh, okay, so here we can have some of the applications, uh, domains that we have with, with the quad solution. Uh, obviously, uh, in the DSO operations, it can make the, the, the grid operations itself, it can actuate, it can send commands to open, to close. It has artificial intelligence power in order to understand what's happening there and to give insights for the engineers in the company. To, okay, you do, do this, do that here. What I've learned, I'm giving you the, the, the specific hints you need to, to know. It has a very, uh, uh, very powerful edge data processing. Uh, it can uh, make the, also uh, the part of the AMI system, the metering system management. Uh, it can aggregate a lot of sensors depending on each of the applications that the, the source might have. And of course, in the end, it has a edge pl data platform there running on the edge. It also has the power, the capabilities of doing the flexibility management on the edge also. So uh, attending these difficulties I told you in the beginning, this, this solution has the power to do it 
in the field on the grid. So it can, okay, now I need to stop the, uh, that uh, photovoltaic system. I'm going to dispatch the natural flow and it can make the operation by itself, uh, making all the dispatch that needed. And in the end, it's also a connectivity hub. So we can have there in this equipment, lots of uh, communication channels that we might have, 5G, 3G, IoT, whatever we need. We can have fiber optics, we can have the connect, uh, connected in the solution. And obviously, we can, it's only the beginning, as I say, it's a platform with the, the capability of growing, as I'm going to show you in the upcoming slides. So here, the idea is to show uh, a little bit how the quad solution is going to, to reduce the, the volume of equipment in the secondary substation, as was saying in the beginning. As you can see here in the lower part, uh, it's a, a usual um, secondary substation that's used in Europe. So we have there, for example, in the secondary substation, we have one router, two RGDMs, one RTU, one LVM, and so on, the balance meter. Uh, in, the, in the installation itself. And we have, in the upper part of the, of the slide, we have the systems that work in, uh, in the system level, where we have the, the SCADA, the automation management, uh, the electric flows, and so on. And when, when we have the QED application uh, installed in the secondary substation, as we can see, we lose, lost, uh, we don't need to have any more uh, lots of those equipments, so the QED can do it in a virtual way. So it virtualizes the solutions that were physical before. So as you can see, we have here in the, in the left part, we have the virtualized IEDs. So now it's all virtualized, so we have the virtual RTU, the virtual router, the vPhaser, and so on. And we gain the edge applications as a bonus, let's say. Uh, so we have there, uh, the load profile, we have the transformer monitoring, uh, we have the power quality uh, flow, uh, running, and also all this the management of the automation of the grid. So the QED can by itself give insights for the operation and for the engineers in the company to know what they need to do. Uh, here it's only a hint of the architecture of the solution. Uh, in the lower part in, in blue or gray, we have the, the hardware itself, so where we can see uh, all the connections happening, where we have the sensors, uh, the modems, the Hogovsk coils, if we have it there, the smart terminations and so on. In the middle, we have the decoupling layer. It's where uh, all the magic, let's say, happens, all the, all the maths, uh, the engineering parts is here. It's where we have the standard oper uh, operational system of the quad solution, okay? So it's where it happens the, the operation systems, the connectivities, and also the containerization of the, of the applications. In the upper part in gray, in green, sorry, we have the microservices, and these microservices are the ones that each of the users can make the personalization of their needs, okay? So we can see here in the upper part, uh, the community, I'm going to, to say uh, in the next slides how it's going to work, but it's the co-development of the solutions by the users of the quad solution. And obviously everything is connected in the cloud, so that's why we see the 5G as enabler uh, of the solution. Uh, so here we have um, the quad, as I was saying before, as one enabler of this, uh, this new ecosystem. Uh, so, Again, the quad virtualizes the, the, the solutions that we need to have, and we have the services that come embedded with the, with the equipment are those ones in, here in the middle, in, in blue. So we have there the low voltage grid analytics, the asset management, the grid operations, and so on. Uh, and we have there the co-creation program. It's where we can have the the company is working to develop what they need to, to develop in an open source partnership. So it's a way to leverage the operation of all the DSOs companies in the world that use the solution. And we, we have good expertise in the middle doing the, the, uh, the orchestration of, the, of those new applications. So it's like an, uh, uh, an, a smartphone. Oh, I need a software for the bank. You download it so you can do it here uh, in the solution as well. 
Uh, going to the, to the finalization of the presentation here, it's how we see the future uh, of these new, uh, the operation of these new, new systems. So we, we're going to leave this predeterministic system where we have uh, a flow, uh, a normal way of doing stuff, and we have now everything happening at the same time, uh, very connected in, in a dynamic system. So it's the future of the operation of the power grids, having there the capability of doing uh, the edge processing. It's the, 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 the most important uh, feature that we see in this equipment and in the future of the operation of the grids. Here, just for, for us to close, uh, it's, one, it's one of the use cases I select to, to bring here that are Odd, lots of other user cases, but this one is one of the most important that we see the application of the solution. So if we have the quad applied, lots of them in series in the circuits uh, on, the, on the grid, and we have the 5G with low latency making the support of this operation, we can have in the case of one outage, of one fault, we can have the clearance of this fault in less than one second. So it, it's a way to to, to leverage as much uh, in, a, in a huge way how things work nowadays. And here is my last, last slide. It's uh, only to show you the other use cases, initiatives that we as an energy company we tested in, in the, during the time. So the idea is not to pass through all of them, but just for you to know, we tested the fault selection in it Italy we tested real time of healing in Spain. So we see here lots of other applications, more than ones that I show you with more details uh, for the, for the uh, DSOs companies. So thank you so much for your time. I appreciate, and if I have any doubts, I'm here, just reach me whenever you need, okay? Thank you so much. Welcome, Luke Robertson, Senior Director, Honeywell. Hey, good afternoon. Good afternoon. You know, 